Engineer775 here, wanted to talk to you about ARC batteries. I know you've seen a lot of them in our videos and we've had great success with them. And they come in a couple different sizes. This is the uh, 100 amp hour. And uh, the reason we've loved these is because they have their own circuit breakers. They have a variety of terminals, top and bottom, and they have their own screen that tells you the state of charge, whether it's charging or discharging. And this battery, this is the first one I've had a problem with. And so we're going to troubleshoot this battery. It would not come on. And so, and a few months ago, I had talked to James Mass, the owner of Arc, Arc Lithium, and asked him if he would send me some BMSs, some battery management systems, and whatever else might fail in an EMP. Uh, again, uh, lithium batteries, one of the weaknesses are not being able to EMP harden them. And when we do a lot of Solarcs that are EMP hardened, it's kind of we're stuck in this conundrum of how do we uh, take care of the customer here. So I said, let's get some extra BMSs and then let's see if we can field service these batteries. So their manual says that the BMSs are serviceable. Some batteries you can't do this with or it's just cost prohibitive or just very difficult. So what I want to do in this video is replace the BMS and if that is the problem. But first we need to diagnose this battery and see what the problem is. And the nice thing about this battery is that you can easily take the whole side cover off. Um, the screws are there that you can just take the whole side cover off and take it apart and replace the BMS. And so again, I'll, just so you know, the BMSs that we do get, we put in a, a Faraday cage to protect them. And in case there is an event. So um, again, I'm showing a picture right here now of the terminals on the bottom. You have um, three positive terminals, three negative terminals for combining and paralleling, depending on how you're setting the, the arc up, because the arc has uh, its own feet that bolt on, and or you can put it in a rack, and the arc has their own modular rack that you can get, and they keep improving. Um, I keep working with them and asking them questions, how about this, how about that, and soon they'll be closed loop communicating with the solar converters. But yeah, I'll have a future video about the BMS in this battery, and how it actually works and how it does this active balancing. So here we see the battery. Um, I'll, I also always in these lithium batteries, whether it's Fortress, Home Grid, you name it, I've always been looking for a charger that if I do get in trouble and I, the battery gets discharged too low that I could charge it back up. So I have a couple options in charging. I use this uh, 360 watt lithium battery charger. I also have a golf cart battery charger for lithium. And so I could really put some amps to them. So I'm trying to, I was trying to wake this battery up and excite the BMS and see if that was a problem. So I just threw, you know, 56 volts across these terminals. The BMS is basically just a switch and I was trying to wake it up, but it never came alive. I did eventually check the voltage on the battery itself and it was fine. But I left this charger on for over overnight just to see what it would do if it would bring it back to life. So next day, nothing. So um, anyway, time to replace the BMS. And there's basically just four screws and one wire that gets butt spliced in to, you can follow it through this wire harness. I, I was tracing it and you just gotta butt splice that in there with um, the wire that's coming out of the BMS. So again, the BMS is just a switch. I just took the wires off, taped them up so they're not in contact. Again, the battery cells are still good. It's the BMS that I determined that wasn't working and we're just gonna replace that. So I spent a lot of extra time because I had never opened one of these up. And um, so once the BMS, the new BMS is put in, one of the procedures is you need to um, excite it. The reason I'm pointing to the other board is, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I asked James, um, he's, he basically said in order for this battery to be UL certified, it needed that board. So it's a safety compliance. I'll find out what that actually does. I don't know at this point, but so we didn't replace that board because there was nothing wrong with it, but we did splice in. We need to cut the, cut the wire out of this and just splice in there for this BMS. And, um, and that's it. So the BMS in the package, it comes with new screws. So here's the new BMS, just put it in there. So it's four screws and a one butt splice. 
and then the one connector between the BMS board and the UL safety board, I'm calling it for lack of not knowing what it actually is. So, and then we are going, I just took a wire across this P minus and B minus um, per the manufacturer saying to, in order to excite the board, to activate the board, you know, some inverters have an activate uh, mode on them that will activate the BMS. And basically that's what I'm doing with this uh, jumper to excite it. And then, um, and then we're good to go. And um, like I said, screws come with it. It's very simple. So some of the other BMS swaps are very difficult. They put so much uh, protectant on the coat. It's just difficult. Anyway, battery comes on. Uh, it beeps and it tells you 50%. And that's exactly the way these batteries always come in. So not a problem there. So pretty much determined that's what it was. So not a problem. We had a bad BMS. Replace it. I would say if I had, if I knew that it was a bad BMS and I was replacing it, it would not take 15 minutes to do the job, maybe 20 minutes, um, just being careful. But it's very easy to do when the breaker's off. You're not, you know, you're, you're, you're the relay's off. You're not, uh, you're not hot. You just undo these screws. I do tape up the terminals for safety and butt splice that one wire on the right land these two jumper across to excite it and and you're done the accessibility is so easy taking this whole side cover off we've had other batteries where we have replaced bmss or attempted to replace a bms in a bad lithium battery and it's like you're performing surgery very difficult to get to get the exacto knife out cut away all the um i call it the goop that is on the connectors if you just try to pull them apart you destroy the board and so you're really I guess for warranty reasons they goop everything up but um, so this is great this was a fun little side diversion I had a battery that was bad and we just went ahead and replaced the BMS so I have a couple extra BMS's that I've kept here for this and this is a solution that we offer if you want a Solar EMP hardened inverter you can buy an ARC battery and know that you can replace the BMS. So I have other customers that have bought batteries and buy extra BMSs, um, but in a battery like a Simplify or some others that I've seen, that is not possible to field service that. Or people promise you they can field service it and then you find out later that that is not the case. This was super easy and I just, it's in the manual, but I hadn't done it. So I'd like to, you know, do it myself before I tell you that it's it's doable. So this is a strategy for those of you who are up up to speed on EMP hardening. Know that what it's going what's going to fail in this. Uh, the screen might still fail. You can buy extra extra screens too. Um, they're not bad. And so the things that would fail in this battery are field serviceable, field replaceable in about under a half hour if you replaced the BMS and the UL board right above it. I think that's it. So again, been very happy with the performance of the ARCs. We haven't had any failures per se. We've had some screen issues, but that's about it. So again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.